Hello there and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for the Scientist. So today we're going to be doing something a little different and that's departing from our regular courses to have a look at a special request which you've probably re uh, deduced from the title is taking some measurements of a histological section. In this particular case we'll be looking at fat and fibrosis within a heart biopsy. And so without further ado, let's get, actually, no, there is some further ado, uh, I should mention, is that uh, we do cover some slightly more advanced topics today. Um, everything is still fairly straightforward, but I'm going to be moving kind of quickly. Um, and if uh, you don't have a heart biopsy, um, if you're looking at a different histological section, uh, these techniques should still be fairly useful to you. So hopefully you should be able to get something useful out of this. And now let's have a look at the images. So. Uh, sometimes when you're taking light microscopy images of a histological section, uh, you may find that the section is too big for a single field of view, so you have to take a couple um, a couple of images which you're going to want to um, combine into a composite later on, which is exactly what I have here, and in this case just two images. So I'm just going to take these two images and drag them into Photoshop. And so the command, well, okay, so what we want to do is merge these two layers into a composite image to get a full image of the heart biopsy. And to do that, we are going to use the command uh, photo merge. And you can get to that by going up to File, and saying Automate, and going to Photo Merge. And so that brings up this dialog box here uh, with a couple of different options. So in terms of layout, um, if we just select Auto, that's going to be perfectly fine for our purposes. Uh, you could choose reposition because that's really all we're doing. There's going to be no distortion just from taking direct photos from a microscope, but auto is fine. We're going to use files uh, as opposed to using a folder. And because I've already brought the images into Photoshop, I'm just going to say add open files. But you can get to them by clicking this browse button and navigating to the appropriate place. We have a couple of options on the bottom here, which some of these were introduced in later versions of Photoshop, at least later from CS3, which is what I've used previously. Um, and I know CS3 has blend images together, which I'll usually check um, because that's going to correct any sort of lighting inconsistencies within your images. Um, for the time being, I'm also going to check vignette removal because that can sometimes be an image uh, an issue with microscopy images. And I'm also going to say content aware fill transparent areas because I know for a fact in this image there is a transparent area that we might as well fill because we can. And with that, I'm going to say OK. And so now what Photoshop is doing is basically taking these two images and comparing them and lining them up um, so that they overlap with each other. And I should mention that when you're taking the images, you want to make sure that there is some overlapping region between the two so that Photoshop has something to work with. And as you can see, uh, we've got a beautiful image here done through the uh, magic of Photoshop. And this area here is just selected because that is the content aware fill that had taken place. Uh, normally this would just be transparent. So I'm going to deselect just by hitting Control D. And um, one thing, I am going to get rid of this composite. Um, it's got my content aware fill because I want to show you uh, normally, or I think if you don't use that content aware fill option, you're going to get two layers like this. And all you need to do with two layers is go up to layer and say uh, merge visible or you can say press shift control E and that's just going to merge them down into a single layer and we'll deal with this transparent area later. So for now uh, the next step we want to do is actually select the biopsy and after tinkering around for a while I found that really the best tool for this or the easiest tool is just the magic wand tool which you can get to by pushing the W key. And so with the wand tool, you just want to click, oh, I should note um, the settings up here. Uh, first of all, we want to uh, create a new selection. Uh, point sample is fine. The tolerance of 32, which is the default, seemed to work fine for this particular image. Uh, Anti-aliasing we want unchecked, because we just want a hard black and white selection. Uh, contiguous we do want to check, because we just want to select this outer area, and none of the white area in, in the middle of the biopsy here. And sample all layers is irrelevant for our purposes because we only have one layer. So if we just click anywhere outside the heart, um, right off the bat we have a pretty good selection. Um, but you can see there's some junk down here in this transparent area. So to add to that, uh, you hold the shift key and just click again in this area and you can see it's all added. So I'm just going to do that with these other areas, this corner here and the transparent area up here. And now I've got a selection that I'm pretty happy with. If I want to check it, I can go down to the quick mask mode, or I can push Q. 
And that gives an overlay of, uh, in this case, what isn't selected, um, which I'll come back to and explain in, 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 a, <laughs> in a second. But for the most part, this looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to exit quick mass mode, and I want to save this selection as an alpha channel. So to do that, you go to select and say save selection. And in this case, I'm just going to call it biopsy and hit enter. And so what that does is if you go to your channels panel um, and you go down to, actually, you know what? Uh, <laughs> okay, I made a bit of a mistake here. Um, so I'm going to throw this away. And I should note, I've selected, uh, in this case, everything but the heart. So before I save my selection, what I want to do is inverse it. So I'm going to hit uh, Control, Shift, I, and that's going to give me the inverse of my selection. And I see that I have some more selection down there. So I'm going to go into my quick mask and use my pencil tool uh, and just color that out. So good, so it's gone now. Um, yeah, and also I should say for select, uh, the menu item is right here instead of the shortcut key. So now I'm going to go save selection, and now I'm going to call this Bopsy and hit OK. And so one thing I want to note is that in Photoshop CC, and I'm not sure when this changed, but compared to CS3, you seem to get the inverse of your save selection here. So if you were in CS3, uh, what you would actually see is this. Um, but for some reason, it's now switched uh, to the inverse, which is fine, but it's just something to keep note of um, so you're not confused. So the next thing we want to do is, in this case, is select the fat cells. And again, I found the best selection tool for this is just the magic wand tool, which again, you can get to by pushing W. And so all you need to do is uh, go through, I mean, we're going to use the same settings as before, just to note. But you just want to go through and select um, the fat cells that you're interested in. And I made a mistake here. You want to be holding the shift key so that uh, all your selections are added together. So it is slightly, whoopsie daisy, I'm going to hit control Z to undo that. Um, it is a little painstaking to go through and select these kind of by hand, but ultimately it doesn't take too much time. Um, so I'm just going to select most as best I can here. Yeah, that's that looks pretty good to me. I'm sure I'm probably missing some somewhere. But again, uh, we're going to do the exact same thing and save in saving this selection. Uh, so we'll go to select, save selection, and I'm going to call this one fat and hit enter. And you can see it appear here. And I'm going to deselect now by pushing control D, uh, which you can also do by going select, deselect up in the menu. Now the next thing we want to trace, or at least isolate, is the fibrosis, which is all of this green uh, stain here compared to the red muscle stain. Now we could use the magic wand tool again um, by holding shift, and it works okay, but it's not amazing. So there is a better way to do this, and that's going to be isolating the colors out of our um, channels panel here, looking at the red, green, and blue channels. And so what we want is something, a channel that provides a lot of contrast between the green area and everything else in the image, which in this case is the red channel. So what we want to do is take this red channel and drag it down to the new channel icon here, the new page, and that's going to create a copy of the red channel, which I'm going to rename to Fibrosis. And so what we want to do basically is to create, a, convert this to a completely black and white um, image like our other two selections here uh, with in my case um, the fibrosis being white and everything else being black uh, so I will have to invert it after but basically we just want to invert this from everything else or uh, isolate this from everything else so to do that we're going to use the threshold command and you can get to that by going to image adjustments and down to threshold and so basically what this does is uh, all uh, luminosity information uh, or basically the lightness or darkness of your pixels will either be converted to black or white depending on their value uh, represented by this histogram. So generally you just want to slide this little slider around until you have what looks like a pretty good selection and you can look at that or you can see where you're at by clicking this preview checkbox and sort of seeing what's selected. And to me I can tell sort of by this hump that that's kind of the information that we're after. So I think as long as I'm in kind of this little valley um, I'll have what I'm after, which again, looking at the preview, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to say OK. And uh, just to be consistent with my other channels here, I'm going to invert this by hitting Control I or uh, where is it? <laughs> I 
I use control I so often. Yeah, there it is. Um, under adjustments and invert. Um, so now I have my three different selections. And so I should note here that what we're going to be doing next is measuring the areas. And when I say that, it's basically Photoshop is going to count up the number of pixels. Um, now, these measurement tools come baked into Photoshop, I think CS6 and later on. So if you're using an earlier version of Photoshop, uh, such as CS3, you're going to need a different plugin um, to measure these areas, and the methodology might be slightly different. But for the time being, I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop CC. So first of all, we want to load up, we're going to start with the biopsy channel. We want to load that up and we want to load the selection. So to do that, you hit hold control, hold control and click on the little icon here in your channel, uh, in your channel. And so that's going to load the selection of your biopsy. Now we want to go to window and load up the measurement log. And if we go, go to this little drop down menu here, we go, we want to say select data points and go to custom. And this will allow us to specify that we want to measure the area of the selection. So just make sure that's checked and then hit OK. And so now all you need to do is hit record measurements. And so Photoshop is going to count all of the white pixels in this case. Now I've got a list of about, if we scroll down, 122 uh, different area measurements here. And those all come from, if we zoom in, little specs like this that you wouldn't normally see. The good news is um, the first um, measurement that we get here is the sum total of all areas. So we don't even need to really worry about the rest of these as long as we have this top one. So at this point you would probably want to write this number down or maybe put it into Excel um, because we're going to need it for the analysis later. Um, but for me I'm just going to delete everything because I'm not going to be doing any real analysis from this. And then we simply just do the exact same things for the other two channels. We click the channel, hold control while clicking the icon, and again saying record measurements. And so you see again we have a list of measurements, and once again it is the first option or the first measurement here that we're most interested in because that is the sum total. And so basically once we have those three numbers, I'm not going to do it here, but uh, just for example. To measure the area of the fat or the fibrosis in this heart, you simply take those pixel counts, so for instance fat, uh, the fat pixel count, and divide it by the number of pixels of the biopsy, and that will give you the percentage fat in this heart. And I can tell you when I did it yesterday that fibrosis uh, gave about 48%, which, uh, you know, probably looks about right given the selection here. And so I think that does it for today's lesson. Um, hopefully that was pretty clear for you. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, and I will do my best to answer them. And with that, I guess we will call it a day. So thanks again for watching, everyone. I will see you all next time. <laughs>